Hello my friends and welcome to this very special pick a card reading which is the next instalment in this trilogy of readings that I'm doing with Eye of the Serpent Tarot and Ember Moon and this is the Maiden, the Mother and the Crone, this trilogy of readings um, or this trifecta, particular trifecta of readings um, and nobody really knows where the Maiden, Mother and Crone idea came from. It's very famous within neo-paganism and modern uh, kind of witchcraft ideas but it's been throughout history represented in different religions and um, was made famous by a poet from the 20th century called Robert Graves who wrote about it in a book called The White Goddess and that's where the majority of like the idea of what we know of it now has come to um, light. Um, they are associated with the stages of the moon so the new moon going to the full moon is known as the phase of the maiden the full moon is the phase of the mother and the full moon going to the new moon waning is the phase of the crone so with the maiden aspect um which is the waxing moon we've got new beginnings we've got um births um we've got inception of ideas um enchantment, youth, and expansion. So these are the themes that we'll be exploring in this reading. I thought I'd pull out the archetype of the maiden to kind of give you some prompts to help you tune into that idea and think about that. And then I decided to pull each of these archetype cards, sorry, these um, al alchemy cards to help you choose. So part one is Splendor Solace. Pile two is Virgin's Milk, and pile three is Synchronicity. So timestamps will be in the description box below. I'm really excited about this, and uh, I'll see you at your reading. Bye. Hello, pile one, and welcome to your reading. You chose the Splendor Solace, the Sun's Splendor. I've just got this maiden card here. We'll just have it in the corner just to kind of like remind us of and just kind of have the energy emulated um but there's a really joyful time i feel like there's a sense of rebirth with this pile really enjoying this energy of youth enjoying um these beautiful like pinks and these like golden hues it's a uh, very newness and, and enjoying the sense of newness I've got a feeling that you, Pile One, you tend to approach things with a beginner's mind and that really helps you. And when you approach it with a beginner's mind, it allows you to um, see things like, you, you just see things fresh. Um, getting into the mindset of like a childlike idea is really uh, beneficial for you. Like you may go into new projects and things like that and then you just come in like you're, you're really quite happy to just just be there um i'm just interesting how we have 53 and we have that's five and three and that's 50 and three but that's actually eight and that's uh <laughs> and that's 53 i just thought that was really interesting so if you were to take it like that would be eight you know 53 eight eight so eight is an interesting number here I don't know, I just, I just feel like you, Pile 1, you don't... You, moving on from things is quite easy for you. Like, you, you can see what the... Um, the kind of benefit is from, from a situation and you, you move on. You don't hang around. You can kind of see the new things. I mean, obviously, there are some things that probably do get to you from time to time, but generally, I think you, 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 you come into situations with new vigour... You know, you're very hopeful, I feel. You're very hopeful. Um, and you're willing to see the good in most situations, like glean the, the, the gems that come from a situation. So, that's very interesting. Okay, I'm just going to pop that there. No, I want, I want you to see it. So, yeah, we'll just pop it there. 
So I've pre-picked some cards. There's one deck I haven't shuffled because um, otherwise I would know what it is and I don't really want to know what it is. Um, I didn't even really like knowing what these were, but I was like, I've got to use something for you to pick the cards from. So um, I've got like a section I'm going to use initially and then ones that I'm going to use afterwards so right we've got Dawn the Golden Haired which is Duty this is from the Fairy Tale Oracle so I'm going to have to look that up Mercury well that's matching with that really Shapeshifter it was reversed so it was projecting any image that serves your personal agenda in the moment Okay. And rib kiel. And imagination. Okay. I wanted to keep that card for later, but never mind. <laughs> never mind. It's come out now to play. So, yeah. I'll just pop these up here. So, yeah, you're very playful. Pile one. Very, very playful. I'm curious about this Dawn the Golden Haired. I don't know what that is. Um, let me just have a check in the book and I will get back to you. So, my friends, this story is very interesting. Um, it's basically about a girl that is... Her hair symbolises Dawn and uh, a king falls in love with her but basically sends this other guy to try and win her heart because he can't be bothered and then like he she falls in love with the guy that like tries to win her hand obviously um and then <laughs> and then she um and then and then she has to marry the king so and then and then he dies and then she ends up being able to be with the guy. Now, the main thing from this story is perseverance and patience is something that you seem to prize upon other things. Like you, seeing the good in people is something that you do. You really do. You are able to make people feel good probably at times when nobody is feeling compassionate towards them, when people are not able to um, see this good in them, you are able to do that. Um, also in a situation, I would say as well, you are able to see that kind of like childlike innocence, that kind of like that real joy in a situation that helps you to, and, and the possibilities of that, that situation which is so beautiful. That's the maiden energy coming through with you. That's what you do. Even in a situation which just seems so dire and it seems, how can you even look on the bright side of this? You do. You do look at the bright side. This card is representative of the divine masculine. So when the divine masculine is in its most optimal state, it's, it's, it's the most dreamiest, if, if you're heterosexual, it's the most dreamiest man you can think of who's completely in touch with his emotions, has every kind of like idea. It's all of the kings, the emperors, and um, the emperor of the tarot. But then you've also got the, you know, the idea of um, the divine feminine as well that is perfectly balanced. And that's the beauty of the divine masculine. And this is what it is. You know, the, the, the warmth of the sun and how the sun encourages um, things in nature to grow, particularly when it's summer or when it's spring, when those rays of sunshine start to warm up the land and make things really feel beautiful. That's the divine masculine. So that's the energy that you exude when you go into situations and you do it like by having this sense of curiosity and you have a fluidity that is able to um, really speak to people. I also see that this um, imagination as well, like you, you really allow your imagination to kind of help you to navigate, um, you know, difficult situations that other people might not be able to. There's a bit of a starseed energy with you, Par One. Um, not that you don't belong anywhere, but that you want to instigate peace, you know? 
I wouldn't say that, well, let's have a look because this is why I've got this in my hand. So it says projecting any image that serves your personal agenda in the moment. So the shadow side of this is that we've got somebody who's who may be a bit of a people pleaser. You may find that you, you know, the 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 attributes are is that you compromise yourself so much so that you don't listen to your own needs. Um and there also may be, yeah, so yeah, I am getting a Libra energy. I was thinking not quite Libra, but actually with that shadow side, yeah, it is. It's a Libra energy um, where, you know, it's that very much wanting to make sure that everything is fair and everything is okay. But not quite, though. You, I think I think there's a there's a particular agenda here and you might you might be more assertive in your agenda. Um, and this is not malicious. This is just human. So... It's also it also may come from, you know, an immature part of yourself, which is like, you know, resonant with the maiden. So, yeah, but um, that's nothing bad. That's just that is just what it is. You know, this is, you know, we're all shades. So, yeah. Anyway, let's see what the tarot has to say about this, because it's really interesting just looking at these themes that the maiden brings up within us. Um, so, yeah. The spirit, what? What would you like to say to Paul One concerning the uh, what messages re resonating with the maiden? Does Paul One need to know right now? Um, need to explore right now. Very interesting. These cards don't really jump out, so we'll see if any do. Okay, so we've got the five of okay. Right, so we've got the wheel of fortune, the five of cups that's too many spirit can i please have um a few more cards that tell us a bit more about pile one and the relationship with the maiden the relationship with the maid of pile one the relationship with the maiden for pile one So, I mean, like, what's that? Oh, ten of, ten of wands. Interesting. I, I'm not going to lie, I do get, like, a people-pleasing vibe here. I do. I really do. I get someone who compromises on their own, uh, on their own, um, on their own happiness because they don't want to upset other people or they have been upset in the past so or basically when 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 there is a sense of disharmony with other people when people are not being in that open state that you exhibit when you go into a into a situation it can it can drain you it can affect you and i'm saying this because i know that i'm i'm similar to that um the only reason usually is how i know this is because i experience most of these things so you know, you go into a situation where you feel like, oh, yeah, you want to you wanna kind of be open. And I used to do it a lot when I was younger, actually. So it's interesting because it's the maiden energy. But when you go into a situation and people don't resonate on that level, it can be quite difficult. Um, and also, you know, there, there may be a sense of imbalance that happens. So it causes like this kind of, you know, almost unsteady, I'm just getting... Um, and with the Knight of Pentacles reversed, again, it may seem that people might view this energy as something that is not um, truthful. And it is down to jealousy. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to lie, it is down to jealousy because when people are usually in that space, they can't see that, but they do see it as as somebody who maybe is just trying to please everyone, trying to be friends with everyone. And um, I don't think that's the case. What's going on? I know that that's not the case. I know that that's not your MO. And then what's that? 
Nine of Pentacles. Nine of Pentacles in the Star of Us. Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 it's, it's other people. It's people's, um, it's people's perception of you. Actually, I was guided to get eight. And I was like, no, that's too many, Spirit. And now... Okay, so we've got the Seven of Pentacles. Okay, so... What I'm seeing here is that you have an innate ability to be able to cheer people up or to make a really great situation um, out of something which, you know, where other people get intimidated by your behavior, quite simply. They get intimidated by you, part one, because um, you come into the situation with this kind of like youth, this vibrance, you exude this, um, particularly when it comes like say maybe to a work situation or when you, you know and people are like a bit like oh oh my god that person's got like so much energy or whatever and to be honest I think that that's beautiful I get really excited when I see that energy because it just makes me think wow this person is he's just got such a good energy just quite simply um, but when people don't reciprocate that energy here or to you um, it's it's very disappointing because you almost like and I, I wouldn't be surprised if it might be difficult for you to if if some of you are single it might be difficult for you to find love because people just assume that you're just so brilliant and beautiful and they just kind of like you know it's it's very intimidating very intimidating energy they're very intimidated so I see like I see like a solo energy almost um I feel like almost like it, this is this is a karmic um, kind of life pattern, something that is. And if you have take a look at your chart and see what's going on there, I think that there may there may be something in there in that respect. So you might have strong Libra placements. We don't have any of the cards that relate to it, but I'm just getting a vibe. I don't normally like kind of attribute the the tarot cards that come up, but occasionally. But we don't have any. But saying that. This card and this card, they do resonate with the Wheel of Fortune. So they're both, they're both Wheel of Fortune. But I do get someone here with this kind of, with these two figures, somebody who's looked upon very fondly, somebody who, and also this youth kind of aspect, youthful aspect, someone who seems like they are just gorgeous and almost ethereal. But it's just, you know, I feel like, I feel like people like, they're really intimidated by you, part one. Your energy is intimidating. Oh, well. That's their problem, isn't it? <laughs> because you're fantastic. Um, so this is this beautiful, like, um, youthful energy that you bring. Like, yeah, you do have... The, you may have this tendency or this thing, this shadow side, but everything's got a shadow side. Um, you've got this beautiful, beautiful, mercurial, youthful energy which brings, like, great beauty to things that are all around it. Um, and it unsettles people quite majorly. But it's okay, because you do you, and you're a queen. Or not even a queen, but, like, they say... Like, they were saying that Nine of Pentacles or, like, some other readers that I've been watching they say that the nine of pentacles is like pre-empress energy and i do get that vibe so yeah but with this star reverse it's just sad it gets you down you know that people don't look at you like that they don't they don't you're like what can i do like i seem like i'm trying to like be nice to people and they don't seem to recognize it yeah they don't they don't because they they're too intimidated they're too scared they're too scared. And it also reveals to them what work that they have to do within themselves to get to your level. And trust me, there are people, and it might be a small number, but there are people who will help you to feel better about that, you know, that will welcome you in that respect. So don't fret, okay, my darlings? You're incredible. And don't change for anybody, okay? The only thing I would say is just strengthen your boundaries. But apart from that, I think you're amazing. So beautiful, beautiful attributes of the maiden with you, pile one. Beautiful. Okay. This spirit. So one. Seven of swords. Tower, the Knight of Wands reversed, the Queen of Cups reversed, 
the wow interesting so nine of wands and then ten of wands okay three of coins reversed yeah you find it difficult to work with people because they just are intimidated by you Ridiculous. Okay, we're going to have a look at how we're going to sort that out. Because that's not fair. You're amazing. I'd work with you. Um, right, okay. And you've got the Eight of Swords. Okay, reversed. Nice. Um, so. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's just by chance. You seem to be around people that don't... Um, that don't appreciate who you are. And I wouldn't be surprised also if um, you dumb down this aspect of yourself in order to fit in. Like you try to, to kind of like pretend that this isn't you. Please don't do that. Please embrace who you are because you're just, you're just gorgeous. You're amazing. You really are. You really are. Don't, please don't um, dumb down yourself. It actually makes you feel older when you do that. Um... And then with the Five of Cups and then the Tower, um, you know, there may be a slight sensitivity to you reacting to when people reject you or when people don't seem to resonate with you, okay? So what I'm thinking is, you know, for you to... And I think this is very useful for you because it helps you to make sure that you get better boundaries and you, like, sort this, this shadow aspect of this shapeshifter. Because what you want, this is the light aspect. So skill at navigating through different levels of consciousness, ability to see the potential and everything. That's your positive side for this. But it, but the negative side is coming up more at the moment because, you know, it, it, this is what needs to work on. It doesn't say that you, you, you're not capable of it, but it's that's what's coming up. And then you've got... Um, the two of pentacles clarified by the knight of wands so you know there's this energy of commitment and i think this the sense of you being committed to yourself and being proud of yourself like this this energy is very um knight of wandsy no more king of wandsy king of wandsy queen of wandsy i would say even knight uh, knight, uh king of wandsy because it's that direction and going into a situation, I can just imagine a character that would come into a situation and be like just the person who cheers everyone up um, in a work situation. And that's that's a very King of Wands vibe. Um, somebody who's very jovial, somebody who like tries to see the good in the situation to make it move so that it can create that warmth to get everybody moving a bit and get everybody working together in a, in a good way. Um but when it's reversed, there's a bit of like scattered energy where people can't, they, they don't know when they see it. They don't know whether or not that they can trust it. And also in the respect of yourself, like whether or not you can trust yourself in that situation. So it's really important to, to make sure that you're stable before like, you know, you trying to go into a situation to make it better. You know, remembering that, you know, you are who you are. Be confident in that. And that's it, you know, um, people can take it or leave it. You know, I'm really getting that strongly. Like, honestly, it's it's like they can take it or leave it. Kiss my ass, you know, seriously, because you, you seem like so amazing, pile one. Um, I don't want you to dampen down your flame for anyone. So you've got um, Knight of Pentacles here as well. Um, and then it's clarified by the Queen of Cups. So... I don't know if there was someone like around you, be it a friend or a maternal figure that was um, being quite, maybe saying that what you did or how you behaved, it was a bit too much. Like you don't need to do that. Don't need to. And they may have also got triggered by your honesty and your optimism. It, seemed, it might not be a mother figure, but it's somebody who's getting triggered by your optimism. Also, on the on the other hand, it could also be you just you know this kind of like sense of like the sensitivity just getting a bit too much you know and then you kind of go off and you you kind of go into this space where the scent like you go from one side of the scale to the other so and that's that kind of immature sense which is the queen of cups reversed so that might be present in someone around you or you might recognize it within yourself but this kind of causes like a bit of a lack of stability. Um, and then you've got the 10 of wands going to the 
going to the um, Nine of Wands. So, this is insecurity, part one. So, what I would urge you with this question of the maiden, right, is where does this want to be happy when you go into new situations? Where does that come from? What is it? What, what, what is that exactly? Where does that impetus or that motivation come from? That would be a question to ask. Does it come from your happiness to want to really instigate something that's pure? And remember, because I, I think that that is what it is for you. You just have to continuously remember that. Because sometimes when other people don't see in your wavelength quite quickly, because you're mercurial, it's very quick. If people don't see that immediately. It's quite difficult. You get like a little bit defensive. So just, uh, I would say like, just, you know, just, just, just keep an eye on that. It's a byproduct of this. It's the shadow aspect of this, which is really interesting how this reading is going into the shadow as well as the, into the thing, into the, the beautiful aspects of the maiden, because it's both, you know, the, the waning moon or the waxing moon is the full moon going to the, uh, sorry, is the new moon going to the full moon? So, you know, you've still got that dark aspect, which you're conquering, which you're getting over, which you're maturing into, which you're becoming. So it seems really cool. Um, and then we've got here the nine of pentacles and the page of cups. Yeah, I just think you intimidate people, part one. You intimidate them. You intimidate them a lot. We've got a lot of people here, do you know what I mean? So, like, you know, we've got three three people here. We've got one there. And I, I'm just thinking, these are people that get influenced, but these are people that get intimidated by you. Because, I don't know, This I feel like you associating with other people in this reading. And this three of pentacles reversed kind of is this disillusionment with like not being able to work with other people or not being able to get on because you feel like when you are yourself it, it, they don't like it but I'm telling you keep on keeping on you will find your crowd you will find your people because you're amazing and it, it, people who are freeing themselves of the mental constraints and th this is a karmic pattern right this this is a karmic pattern and this is about you going through this in order to learn how you can be more of yourself so that you can find the people that you really are meant to be with. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. But it's cool, huh? <laughs> okay, let's see what goddess energy there is for you. Lady Nada, divine service, service, light work and higher heart. Well, I mean, you know, it, it is exactly that because you know she she's in service to other people she is about i mean i don't actually know exactly what she is about let me double check with the with the book she's a goddess and ascended master and works with many on the ascension path who are actively trying to better themselves and be more loving this is what you are part one you are like you are you are just like a bit of an angel really i'm feeling even though you know an earth angel right I, I just I just get such a good vibe from you, Parwan. Like I feel like you you just brighten up a room whenever you walk in, and I'm just like a moth to that flame. I'm just like, yeah, you're so cool. <laughs> like I just want to know you. <laughs> I just want to be around you because I know that I'm gonna be having such a good time if I'm around you. And um, some people don't like that. Some people don't like that. Sometimes seen as a higher aspect of Mary Magdalene. Lady Nada vibrates the high frequencies of light with the Christ light and violet flame. Yeah, you guys work on some next level. Um, a high priestess in Atlantis, energy of healing and higher transformation associates with the higher heart chakra. Um, your light is needed in the world. Love, help, comfort, inspire and support others in whichever way you feel called. Your service is seen. You will be rewarded in wonderful ways when you show up with your divine work. Yeah, you, I mean, of course people are going to find you triggering because like, you know, and this is about compassion as well. People will find you triggering because they're just, they'll be like, oh, you know, I can't, I can't live up to that. The right people will come to you, my darling, part one, because you're just fabulous. Love you, part one. Right, okay. Oh, look at that. Kona power energy. Love it. 
Love it. You're very powerful beings, Pile One. Very powerful beings, exceptional beings. I mean, you know, you just, you, you radiate joy, you know, so much joy and so much like clarity and sunshine. It's, it's beautiful. And you evoke it in other people. And the reason why people can't deal with it is because they can't, when you evoke it, they're like, oh no, it shows about their own inconsistencies and they run away. That's their problem. So I've got a gift for you. Um, and this is this is what this journey is um, in terms of this reading. So let's have a look. The gift of growth. Move on to the next stage of your life. Recognize the resources, skills, and natural abilities that help you to leave, leap forward. Be confident. You are ready. Wow. So on uh, on a three D level, right? What I'm getting is like you're you might be trying to find like work work situations that happen um that you're trying to find your place within like work or you're trying to find like a group of people that you can work with or create with it seems like um and this is quite difficult because your vision your image also your personality doesn't seem to like resonate with the people that you have been currently working with so what this is about is about you even being more tuned in and tuned into your authentic self. Now, this is so cliche, right? Because this is this is the standard. The more that we um, tune into the to the essence of ourselves, the more that we can vibrate with those around, vibrate with the right people, and then they'll come to us like magnets. And it's interesting, even though it's the maiden. This does come with age. It's a sense of maturity. And also, depending on whether or not you've had, like, in terms of your upbringing, um, I find that people who have had incredible um, parents who have, like, really done their own healing and understood their own healing and then, you know, been able to impart the sense of freedom and um, kind of uh, power within their children to embrace this they don't need to go through this cycle of feeling like they're trying to people please people do you know what i mean because they just are themselves and i find that with like amazing artists who really do well not to say that they don't have their own problems but you know this is a cycle this is this is a karmic cycle this is a familiar pattern like something to do with the family or something to do with that i don't know your own karma maybe something to do with your self node but i don't know maybe investigate that look at your chart um part one um and just have a look at that because there's this there's this thing about like you know denying yourself denying this power of yourself and you have a lot of power and you know how to do it like you you could probably work a room like really well and people are like who's that girl you know or who's that boy do you know what i mean and then they they get a bit gel but yeah, oh wow. Oh yes, and last but not least, we have some gemstone energy for you, Pole One. Interesting reading, gosh. I, I'm, so much, I'm so more used to like the goddess of death or like the, like the old things. When it comes to like the newer stuff, I'm just like, oh my God, I feel like a fish in, like fish out of water. I'm like, oh, the newness, I can't deal with it. <laughs> So, yeah, let's have a look. Sorry. Okay. Pile one, pile one. Could I have a card for pile one, please? Pile one. Oh, calcite, amplify. Um, cleanse, open, double trouble. Calcite has a unique optical, optical quality. I'll get you some calcite. This is optical calcite. Dashi. Can I get it in focus? Anyway, that's what it looks like. Um, uh, calcite has a unique optical quality. When you are looking through the stone, it appears doubled. Calcite can amplify energy and higher awareness and healing, pairing well with other crystals, taking on their attributes to increase metaphysical abilities. A powerful dissolver, calcite transforms negative energy for the release and renewal. It also aligns the chakras, um, cleansing the aura of toxicity and renewing energy flow. Calcite reminds you that there is always a new beginning. You just have to decide where to start, and it's Cancer and Venus. And that's what it looks like there. But this is a real piece. 
this is optical calcite it's also known as Icelandic spar as well beautiful beautiful so if you can get yourself a bit of that that can really help so part one there's your reading I hope you enjoyed that that was really interesting <laughs> I really do hope you enjoyed it if you did like it please do like it please do give it a thumbs up and go check out the others readings as well on the maid on the mother and the crone um it'll be interesting to see what is coming up there um but um yeah there you go take care my darlings and I'll speak to you soon bye Hello, Pile 2, and welcome to your reading. Um, this is basically what your maiden themes are um, that are coming through in this reading. Or what Spirit wants to communicate with you regarding the aspect of the maiden right now. Interesting how you chose the virgin's milk. It's almost like there's a pure essence that you want to derive from the time when you were in this phase of your maidenhood um, or from that when you were in that maidenhood phase because you know virgin milk is kind of like it, it's a it's an anomaly isn't it it's not something that actually can really be there because a virgin can never give the idea of milk. Um, but what is the idea of it? What is this essence? So what I'm getting is that this... It's this pure innocence. This pure ability to be able to tune into that energy of yourself. That will bring about... That, that, that needs to be brought up to the surface. Because what I'm finding here with these readings is that Spirit is giving me the impetus to tell you what is it about the aspect of the maiden that needs to come into your life right now. So, yeah, that's what I'm getting. I'm just going to check the book out. It'll be interesting to see what your other cards are, Pile, um, too. But, like, you know, this is the idea of not believing in the um in in the value of what that virginal sense kind of gives to you um you know the idea of the beginner's mind the idea of what the maiden brings that that whole thing of the 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 full moon going sorry the new moon going to the full moon that stage it's almost like you you don't believe that there is a that there's value in it or if you do believe that there's value you may find it difficult to do that or what is coming up is that this reading is here to help you find that so let's see what your other cards are so the archetype is wow magical child okay seeing the potential for the sacred beauty in all things belief that everything is possible abundance I am a limitless being. I can manifest whatever I desire in this physical reality. The juniper tree deception. God, that looks like really dark. Um, okay, <laughs> considering that we've all had like really happy cards and then like there. And then waxing gibbous, which is the which which is exactly the align um which is exactly the uh stage for The Maiden. So let me just double check what that is. Goodness, Pile 2, like that story, I'm, I would suggest that you go and read that, yeah, because I'm not going to tell you about it. <laughs> it's too, it's, it's, it's a bit, it's very dark. Um, But essentially, like, it's a really tragic story from the Brothers Grimm. So Juniper Tree, Brothers Grimm, go Google it. Um. And it's, bit, and it's quite complicated, which is also why I'm not going to indulge in it. But the main thing is, is that, you know, it may be difficult to find impossible, um, impossibility in situations where you may think that, like, how, how, can, you, how can you gain a sense of uh, hopefulness and um, optimism in this situation when it seems like everything is dire? 
Um, and that's what the maiden is asking you to embody, is asking you to look upon this situation. And this is something that's very special within you. Like you have the ability to see this sacred beauty and also to be able to forgive. Um, you've got an ability to be able to, to really, really see the beauty in things. Um, it's, it's such a tragic story. Um, and basically this mother foretells like the own, like the whole story about her son and the husband and everything that happens within that. Um, it's, it's really complicated. So I would definitely go and check that out. But, you know, it almost says that if you have been, well, it doesn't almost say, it says that if you have been under a lot of pressure, things haven't been fair, Life hasn't been really doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, you know, you find that, you, you know, it's it's been quite unfair for you. Um, and it's very difficult to get this kind of virgin's milk, which it seems like that because, you know, how does a milk, how is milk produced from a virgin when it's supposed to be a virgin? But then it's the idea, like, what if this could actually happen? You know, act as if. That's the, that's the, um... Uh, the mantra really and because you've got this magical child here you know you're seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things believe that everything is possible you've got a real beautiful innate ability to do that you know um and you may have you know been so grateful for the abundance that you have and that you experience maybe you have already turned a situation around which people thought that was impossible and you have like managed to overcome that i also get that feeling from you paul too that and people may not understand like how you can do that it's just like wow how how does someone that's been through so much have this kind of attitude because this is this is really deep. This is really hard. Um, there's a lot of trials and tribulations and pain and due to the suffering of other people. Let's see what the um, tarot has to say about this situation. Okay. How many cards is that? Yeah, the spirit said to me, take them. Um, so we've got the page of swords. We've got the five of swords reversed we've got the four of swords reversed okay so swords i mean i think that this is also a coping mechanism um ace of pentacles page of pentacles reversed queen of pentacles reversed okay when you read this story, you'll see that there is a definite Queen of Pentacles reversed in that. Two cards, please. Three of Cups. And what I'm getting, yeah, on the majority of, like, the read, or, like, with part one, is that people get triggered by you. This is this is a this is a running theme. People get triggered. The magician reversed. Wow. Okay. So Yeah, people get intimidated by you. They get intimidated. Um I would be really careful about those people who are around you, pile two. Because you've got two reversed court cards here. Page of Pe Queen of Pentacles are people that don't have your best interests at heart. Like, Queen of Pentacles reversed. I've I'm, I'm just, I'm just got this here. And you've got this three here. And then this magician reversed. There are people that don't have your best interests at heart. Particularly when, you, when you've got this kind of attitude where you're like... Kind of not looking at what's important. With this page of swords, I, you know, I don't know. I always view the page of swords as someone who is not looking at his sword when he should be. He's either too absorbed in it or he's either too absorbed somewhere else. Um, 
And it almost seems like there's a defense mechanism going on here that like if things have been bad in the past, then I'm going to make sure that I have a good positive mindset and attitude so that I don't um, so that I'm not brought down by this. Um, yeah, because it may have been something in the past that really um, that really kind of got you down. I don't know about your your upbringing or something like that, but there may have been something there that was pretty tough, particularly with that juniper tree. And it's given you the the thing of where you, you know, you're going to you're going to make sure that you're that nobody's going to rain on your parade. You're going to make the impossible possible. You're going to believe in, in, in abundance. You're going to make things happen. You're going to still be the maiden, regardless of whether or not who wants to dampen down your maiden vibe. Um, and you have the ability to be able to make, you know, make situations. I wouldn't make, make good situations happen for yourself. I wouldn't be surprised if these two, like, want to try and come in on your, or energies that resemble these two. So it could be maternal figures or older female figures or people like that, that kind of, um, um, Bear me one second, my friends. Sorry about that, my friends. Um, so, like, what I'm feeling here is that if this is like some kind of ancestral patterning that has happened, um, this is about you getting through this. Like, this is what the maiden aspect kind of brings out for you. It seems like you use this aspect to really help yourself get over what's happened in the past or you know certain personality types um i don't know if i mentioned this before but i wouldn't be surprised if these personality types kind of come like they recur through through your your experience of this lifetime when i'm what i mean by that is like people who represent these kind of personality types they may come to you um i do get a little sense of like narc empath vibes which means if you are a empath, which it seems to me like you deeply are, um, you may have a tendency to attract people who are like this. You know, Page of Pentacles is that player energy, the one who hasn't doesn't doesn't really have that sense of commitment. Queen of Pentacles energy is somebody who appears to be stable um, and um, loyal and trustworthy, but actually they're not. They're 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 the opposite and this kind of causes this disharmony of this three of cups energy so and then i'm also getting like with this magician reverse there's just this narcissistic kind of vibe that's happening here so there may be you know there may be this sense of like you having to get away completely from all of that kind of toxic situation in order for you to like you know create something and um, that's why i kind of got the idea that maybe you did not like when people look at your situation, they're like, how did you get out of that? How did you deal with that? Okay, Page of Swords, Four of Wands. Yeah, I mean, that's that's you being a, like this kind of, it could be a little bit of dissociation that's going on here as well with this Page of Swords energy. Um, you know, it may also be in this sense of you like, and I, w I don't know if it's like a, I don't, I don't feel like it's a negative sense of dissociation. You may lose yourself in art or things like that, but it's, it's sim you, really appreciating the beauty of certain things because here, seeing the potential for sacred beauty in all things. And that's what I see here. So it's almost like you being able to see that beauty in things is what gives you real happiness because you've seen such darkness, you know, such darkness. This is really dark. Um, and then you've got the Eight of Cups reversed. And that's clearing up the Five of... So, I mean... <clears throat> this this situation still might have a hold of you, which is why I said that it might reappear to you in certain ways for you to work out. So, I think that's... With that Eight of Cups reversed, it's almost like if, if you have walked away from this situation, if it was a familial or family situation... Um, then it may reappear for you to like heal um so that you can confront it the four of swords reversed is you arising as you like coming up to this you're, you're not going to remain dormant to this and with this um, moth here this um with the moth it's kind of 
you're not going to be drawn into any kind of illusion. You're actually going to, you're actually going to, um, you know, like make sure that you're aware of these things um, and you're bringing light to the situation. The Hierophant reversed. You're doing it in a way that nobody, like, it's, it's completely alien. I wouldn't be surprised, alien, I said. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys are like artists who are just off the cuff. Like, you're just totally, you you just do things like that that are so, like, out there. Really out there. You're really, like, um, kind of revolutionary in a way, but revolutionary in a loving sense, an artistic sense. Something that is able to really appreciate the beauty in other things. Well, three of cups reversed twice, pile two. Um, there is a lot of, like, jealousy around this energy, pile two. Like, I'm not, not, not just for you. I also saw it in pile one. Like, they, they get really intimidated by you. And this is people even in, like, the workspace, even in the artistic space. Because the thing is, is that often when people have been through a great deal of pain um, or they've been nurtured in a very beautiful way, they're able to create something incredible. Um, I, either, I, find, I find the two, those are the two kind of like things that, that really give birth. It doesn't happen all the time. It's not, you know, but those who've suffered a lot and those who've been given a lot in the respect of, of an exceptional nurturing background, those are the two kind of ripe grounds for um, amazing work in respect of an artistic sense, I find, because that's my field. So with with that being said, there's this sense of like, there's, there's real, real jealousy, real jealousy. And that's why I said about these recurring patterns that happen again and again, like they don't, like if it, it originates like with the parents or with the family, and then uh, it plays again, plays again. So, let's have a look at this page of pentacles. Five of coins. You know what, yeah, though? In your empowerment, you refuse to be subject to that same behavioural pattern. You refuse to be involved in the games. And you're just like, nope, I'm going to stay true to myself and I'm going to just do this. And I don't even think you do it consciously, Paul, too. I think you do it just because you're just fantastic. Do you know what I mean? You just do it because this is what you do. So this is what the maiden energy brings to you. Wow. And also what I see here is that there is a, um, like, this story is the, of the Snow Queen. And she, you know, she kidnaps this boy and then puts a piece of ice in his heart. It's because a splinter of glass glow goes into his eye and then it goes into his heart and then he starts to become ice and then he becomes her property. So, and it's interesting, when you read that story, please go and read it. When you read that story, it's a similar kind of, like there's there's something about, you know, entrapping a little boy. Um, so it's that whole thing of of refusing to allow yourself to succumb to the mythology that is dictated by your family patterns, by, by, by the trauma of the family patterns. You're like, you don't even, you're not even adhering to it. It's like, it's not even in your remit. So it's like something that you're like, there's something so innate within you, Pal, too, that you just kind of go for the goodness it, it, it's not, I can't even explain it. It's like you, the beauty of what you see in the world is such a driving force that, that the tragedy that you've suffered doesn't even play a part in how you're going to live your life. Do you know what I mean? It's not even a springboard. It's just almost like there is a little bit, as I said, a little bit of dissociation with it because it was, it, it feels like it was quite traumatic. But um, but it's almost like because you, I don't know you're able to transmute it in a really good way so that you are actually really successful. But it does feel like there are people that really envy you like massively. They're really deeply jealous of you. So it's just interesting. It's interesting. This is this is a this is a real superpower to be honest with you. Well, hmm, interesting. The lovers. Somebody will 
if, if you're not already in a relationship um, or a divine partnership um, or a, a relationship with someone that can actually see your worth, I really feel that the way that you've got this balance, even though I said that there was dissociation, I think I think you just realise you're not going to be like this Queen of Pentacles. So you're like, yeah, I'm going to re I'm going to recalibrate that. I'm really going to recalibrate that. And you've done it automatically. I don't know if it's like you've got some guardian angels or something. We'll have a look with your angels in a minute. But you've got some you've got some in really really good. You've got like the best parts of the maiden qualities within you. Honestly, I do feel like when people look at you, they and they, if they know your situation and if they were to be privy to your situation, they would be, how do you do it? How do you do it considering that you've suffered so much? The moon reversed, yeah. You, you were wronged. You were wronged. So wronged, pile two. And then we have the four of swords there there was an opportunity that you could have like been like them you know but and you've put it to rest like in in the respect of like your past you're like that's not a part of me i'm putting that to rest it's not something that i need to awaken within me i know it's it's almost like you 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 really have like managed your shadow really well i'm in awe of you part two you seem like you have really managed some some intense, intense things to to transform it into something really incredible with this maiden energy. It's incredible, part two. Incredible. I'm I'm blown away. Right, okay, so let's have a look at some um angel magic for you. Christiel. Wow. And then we have some goddess energy, Persephone. Wow. Okay. Youth, innocence, rebirth. I mean, you know, Persephone didn't have the best of times, but she had to go down into the underworld, but yet she still was Persephone. And then we have Spider, and it says patterns, and it's reversed. You're breaking these patterns. You're breaking them. I really feel you're breaking them. And if you haven't broken them, you are... Bro um, if you haven't broken them yet, you are in the process of breaking them. And it will leave your gift in a second and i'll pick a a a gemstone for you but i just want to just double check with christiel and what he's kind of evoking for you right now because this is christ consciousness christ energy um and the divine and and you know if, if we think back to the story of christ um he suffered so much like just the story right he suffered so much and yet was still able to give this sense of love. And that's that's what I've been getting from this. That's what I've been getting from this. You're still able to give this sense of love, even though you have been through so much. Particularly with that seven um that four of swords reversed. You can put it to rest. It's like, yeah, that's that was them. That was what they were doing, but they're not a part of my life, and I'm moving away from that and I've healed that. And you've you've there as I said, there is a little sense of dissociation, but with that lovers. With that lovers rever with that lovers upright, it tells me that you've got your you've got both sides in balance, like more than really well. And also, like I wouldn't be surprised if you have a good, you know, you do have friends, or you do have one friend, or you have a good partner, because there is a lot of jealousy around. Like it's difficult to find good friends around, but. I do feel, and I almost bit my tongue then. It, it is difficult to find that. But, um, yeah, I feel I feel like you really... You really do feel this sense of unconditional love. And you've worked hard to create peace in your life and the life of others. Trust that as you do no harm, no harm shall come to you. This is, this is exactly the message. And it feels like because you have suffered so much... In your lifetime with what you've had to deal with you're like i'm not going to do that to anyone else i don't feel like anyone needs to go through that or go through what i did you know that that's formidable formidable i mean i'm a capricorn moon so like vengeance is is a big thing for me so like i'm just like 
<laughs> you know, I find this I find this amazing and particularly with this Christ consciousness, this is forgiveness. This is compassion. This is the purest form, right? Not just like, oh, you know, this this is ultimate compassion. Um and you know, she was kidnapped for her beauty, Persephone. Um she wanted to return and like it is like focusing on her like the the tale of of persephone is focusing on her on her innocence she did still become the queen of the underworld so it's almost like you you kind of and the reason why i laugh is because she may have been quite nice and like soft in a respect but she ruled. She ruled the underworld. She became the queen of the underworld. Okay? So this is very powerful, Paul <laughs> too. It's almost like you rule with kindness. You kill with kindness. You really do. And you can help others do that as well. You can help others break the pattern. That's what I see by that being reversed. Because it isn't it isn't upright. It's and it's 10 so i'm just feeling like you 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 you're breaking patterns by your very being of the way that you're transmuting this energy so this is a gift a gift of focusing focusing on your goals and by setting new priorities this is a time to carry out new thoughts into action in a significant area of your life so it may need that sense of focus um which you know when we did cover that sense of dissociation that is occurring or maybe occurring here that kind of goes with focus and it's also, dissociation is is a natural response to what happens. It's a natural response to trauma. Um, but we can move through it by focus. So, anyway, let's pick out a card for you. Pile up some crystal magic for you, crystal support. Angel phantom quartz. Because you're an angel. You are an angel, Pile 2. I feel like you're an earth angel. So... Angel, I'll just show you this here. That's what that is. So acting as a direct connection um, to the spirit realm, Angel Phantom Quartz provides a profound relationship with your spiritual team. It aids in overcoming trauma, addressing inner child wounds, healing repressed memories, and alleviating negative, emotional, um, negative emotions that have been haunting you from the past. With this awareness, Angel Phantom Quartz allows you to release yourself tra from trapped memories and gain into your own personal freedom. Empower yourself and write your own story despite whatever has happened to you in the past. You owe that to yourself. And it's Capricorn and it's the moon. And I was saying that, oh, Capricorn moon and vengeance and all that. So, yeah, I just thought that that was interesting. But that's your reading, part two. Very, very interesting energies here. I have to say, like, it's just, I, I feel quite, like, honoured to be doing this reading and to be tapping into this energy for you. But it seems like this is what you're bringing from the maiden energy. Um, incredible, beautiful, really, really beautiful. I hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know how you feel in the comments about the reading, if it did bring up anything or, um, you know, highlight anything. But otherwise, have a beautiful day, my darlings. And please do go and check out the others reading, the crow, um, the crone and the um, mother with Ember Moon and Eye of the, Moon, uh, Eye of the Serpent Tarot. Uh, I'll leave the description, um, the uh, links in the description box below. But otherwise, have a beautiful day. Lots of love, my darlings. Bye. Hello, Pile 3, and welcome to your reading. You chose the synchronicity card, the Unus Mundus which is circulating around this beautiful jewel here. I don't know, I just got the feeling that maybe you know that there's a time when to sink into this maiden state, um, where that maiden state calls you. It calls you at the right time. You feel that it comes to you at the times when it's necessary. You know, it isn't something that you need to embody consistently. It just happens as and when. Um... So that means that you've got like quite a good mastery of it. Um, 63, 63 and 8. So yeah, this is, yeah, I feel like there's there's this sense of like mastery that you've, you've kind of embodied with your maiden state. So I'm just going to pop that to there. And then we're going to have a look at your other cards. So we've got Alchemist, yeah light attribute transformation of base motives 
and goals into golden wisdom. Um, your astrology. Wow. It's Kazemi, which is in the heart. And this is this is something that I have only pulled once. It's it's a particular I think it's a particular transit which doesn't get a lot of like publicity, but I will look into that. Like a lot of uh like it doesn't come up that often. Um Wow, Verde Prato. Okay, okay. Interesting. Really interesting. Yeah, this is this is experience. You're on my experience pile, pile three. Not to say that the other piles weren't experienced, but they seem to embody the maiden energy a lot more in a I wouldn't say naive sense, but they were more in like actually like taking the energy and like have it like they were embodying it more. Whereas like with you, you you've transmuted it a little bit more. You kind of are harnessing it a bit more. Um, you understand it a little bit more. Um, envy. I'm the same as everybody, but with different challenges. Okay, interesting. People may envy the the stage that you're in because another similarity that I found with this whole reading has been that you um you end up being envied by people because of the beauty of your of your uh, of your maiden. Your maiden is so powerful. Um, if you just bear with me one second, I'm just going to double check what this Kazemi is. Well, it's interesting how I started to talk about Envy when this card came up and then this Kazemi, like this kind of um, jealousy about you. Because that's what Kazemi is. Kazemi is the jealousy um, that happens with people. So basically, um, or, the je or like... That, that people might be jealous of this. And it's interesting because this story is also about jealousy as well. And about the, um, the, the ability to overcome jealousy. But because of jealousy, these wounds have occurred. So I don't know if you are dimming your light, Paul 3. You're dimming your light to, to kind of make sure that people don't get jealous. Or you have, you know, you have had people that are jealous of your, um your abilities, your attributes, because it feels that way. It feels like that with all the paths, if I'm honest with you. Like, there's been a lot of jealousy around them, but just in different ways. And I think with you, it's sometimes, like, about your own um, your own abilities of how you can transmute this. You may be, you know, you may be a really well-versed business person, Somebody who's like maybe launched several businesses who knows how to handle themselves or works quite well, like does does is successful professionally, but and is also able to manage themselves in a really good way that makes them seem like they're quite young, um, that that has this kind of young youthful energy, and that can be very envious to some people. Um, it also could it could also hinder your luck as well. Like there could be a sense of you. Um, you know, you being being looked upon and people trying to sabotage you because that's what happens in this story here. I'm just going to double check what the key words are for this as well. Um, but there is like this sense of people not liking the fact that you, you seem to get into the right place at the right time. You seem to do things in the right space. And it's because all because you are able to understand this maiden energy and you tap into it like really perfectly. I think... It's, it's almost like you, part three, have been the people who can actually, you know, you know how to harness this energy. Um, and people are very envious of that. They don't like it. They don't like it at all. So in the, rece in, in the respect of this, um, attempting to keep things to yourself, hiding the truth about feelings that can lead to pain and misunderstanding. Um, the solution lies within the place you fear the most. So... You know, if you are fearing that, like, like, not being yourself, I feel like there's a sense of you hiding who you are so that you don't have to, um, so, so just in case. And it's actually causing yourself bad luck. 
That's what I'm seeing here. So anytime that you suppress this maiden energy, or you suppress you suppress who you are because you're you're scared of what other people might think. It actually uh, it actually is a direct attack on your luck. Like it it, it is. Um, stare fear in the face. That's what it says here. It indicates that you are being punished by others for feelings you have kept secret. Um. Others have felt entitled to know your every emotion, to almost possess the right to tell you what, like, who you need to do, what you need to do, and who you need to be with. And um, because you haven't said anything, um, they wish to punish you. So I mean, you know, you may have had to keep things quiet. You may have had to keep things like not, like you ha haven't been able to disclose things. But that's because you haven't really felt that you've been safe to be able to do that. I'm just going to check this as well. There's also, pile th three, a little bit of a sense that I get of you not believing that you're good enough for what you're experiencing. There may be some kind of... It's probably why you're so successful or why you do really well or why you are able to manage this so well because... You know, you you kind of maybe are overcompensating for something. Um, so, you know, trying, trying. But you do deserve to be here. You deserve it. You really do deserve it, part three. Okay, let's see what your tarot was saying. These readings have been very interesting. As I said... Um, I think I might have said it in the beginning of this one. It's more about tapping into the energy of what the maiden is bringing to you, the archetype of the image of, of the of the of the energy of the maiden is bringing to you, rather than you know thinking about where you know you can invoke the maiden. Well, obviously, where you this is this is how spirit can ask you to invoke the maiden within your life. But I want to see where it is already, you know, so that we can build upon that. That's how I coach, anyway. Um. So we've got the nine of wands reversed. Okay, the nine of wands reversed. The chariot reversed. The four of pentacles reversed. first thing that's coming up to me is boundaries boundaries which matches with that the nine of wands no the king of wands god can't even read that the king of wands reversed the ace of swords temperance reversed Wow, the magician reverse. So that came up again for Paul. Okay, what is that over here? One more. That came up for Paul two as well. And the six of pentacles. Okay, right. You've come up against a lot of like adversity um, in your in your like kind of professional capacity. I feel. Um, yeah, you've really kind of been up against a lot. It's almost I get the sense that you feel like you've been swimming upstream, but you've still managed to keep like a, a you've managed to weave it and kind of really work with it. Pile t three. Um, it's interesting how we have the nine of wands and then the king of wands reversed. And I thought that that was the nine of wands. It's just like there's this energy which is not, 
it's almost like you're not able to be yourself like completely there's a little bit of um like that you do have a little bit of kind of leeway um in kind of pausing and finding moments for yourself but externally it's very difficult um And I think that when you when you do this, when you stop yourself from being truthful, there's a tendency to manipulate the energy that's around you. And then what happens is then there's this dynamic of where it, there's an imbalance where people feel like they may be below you or something. Or the other way round, where you may actually put yourself actually more so. That's I feel like it's more that it's more that other people you feel like you are at the mercy of other people, and because you put yourself in that mind frame, it causes you to be imbalanced, which causes people to take advantage of you, to take advantage of your goodness and of that situation. I feel it's more to do with like. Um, it could be, for example, if you mentor someone or if you choose you want to mentor someone and then this person who you're mentoring takes advantage of your good nature in that respect. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Um... I feel like, yeah, let's see what those other cards are because this is, this is quite interesting. I'm not 100% clear on this. Five of coins reversed. Okay, Wheel of Fortune with the chariot, yep. Okay. Ten of pentacles, hierophant. Love is reversed. Judgment reversed. Mm. It seems to me like there's an abuse of power here, part three. I don't know in what respect, but it feels like it. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it feels like there's an abuse of power. I don't know if like there's somebody that is, is kind of putting you in a position where you are like where you are abusing the power or where you are being abused or whether you're aware of this. Um, I don't know, but there, there's something where someone is not doing what they're supposed to be doing. There's kind of like a loss of innocence here and I don't know what's kind of happening. Um, I get this like... Sense that things are not what they seem. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit stuck, par three. This is really interesting energy. Okay, let's see what that last card is. The Tower. Okay, right, some big cards, right? Um... I think that somebody's trying to abuse your good nature. Or they may be even trying to paint you out to be something that you're not. Yeah, a bit Iago, right? Um, out of um, Othello. You know, kind of that sense of manipulation where some, where it makes someone think something that they're not... You know, it kind of makes them go crazy because you're like, w w w you know, I'm I'm doing, I'm doing what I can. I'm doing I'm doing everything I can to kind of be kind of, 
you know i'm trying to do i'm trying to do the right thing but then it just seems that there's this there's this abuse of power and people are taking advantage of the fact that they can and it's because it's because they see this maiden quality in you it's really interesting as I said, like spirit is giving me the information that I need to convey to you in respect to the maiden. So whenever you're watching, if you're watching this reading and it resonates with you, you know, it resonates. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. You can switch off. But this is very interesting. I don't know if you have like decided that you want to change things up within a workplace. I am seeing a workplace. I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing anything else really. I'm seeing like a workplace where there is someone who is abusing their authority. And they're, they're using the idea of um, it being legit in the respect of this is like the way that it goes. But really, um, the clarity is kind of like, or the, like the direct kindness of, of it is identifying an imbalance in how the situation is it's not correct um it's a really big imbalance the lovers and temperance reversed and judgment reversed it means nobody is saying anything about it that's why i feel like it's a great dessert like something really and there are people who are benefiting on it I wouldn't be surprised, and this is just a long shot, right? But, like, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody, maybe someone within a workplace is, like, you know, maybe they're sleeping with the boss or something like that. And that's causing a big rift in, like, the work situation. And maybe you want to tell, like, you want to flag it up. Because maybe this person who's sleeping with that person, uh, with the boss, is actually, like, starting to enforce things onto the workplace. And you're like, hang on a minute, I've been here, like, a long time. I, I've, I've worked here. I know how it, how it goes. That's just the example that I'm getting in the respect of, like, the dynamic that I'm getting. Because there is an abuse of power here. You could go another way and, uh, uh, I mean... Uh, apply it to your situation but that's the that's what i'm getting you could have that god forbid in like you know other dynamics but i don't want to go there i'll let you see if that actually resonates with you but um there's a dark energy here pile three and uh i don't like it i don't like it chariot reversed my king of wands reversed temperance reversed the magician reversed judgment reversed the lovers reversed Wheel of Fortune reversed. I don't like it. So, <laughs> um, with that being said, how do we sort this out? What is it? What is the message that you want me to give to Pile 3 e Spirit? Interesting. Okay, let's have a look at your other cards. Yeah, I'll start with some angelic. Okay, Sachiel, right. Okay. Frig. Fertility, family and partnership. And cord initiation. You may be asked to keep a secret that is... That's not... That, that's going to implicate people. There may be something going on there. Really interesting with that cord and initiation. Right place, right time. You're able to harness that power. Um, do you know what it is? It's, it's, your, it's your innocence in this situation that's brought you to this space, that's allowed you to be in this space to experience this. Um, I think people trust you. They trust you, really, they do. They trust you implicitly. They really do. Because otherwise you wouldn't be in this situation, I don't think. They think that they think that you will, like, you know, even though they may have, like, messed you around or effed you over, they still think that you would still support them because you're there. 
But I feel like you're messing around, like not you know, that you're messing around, that, that you have a bad bunch around you, that you have people that don't have your best interests at heart. And what they want is they want their own interests. And then, you know, it's almost like you're being privy to this situation. They almost see like your family, like you're part of it. But actually you're not. You've actually suffered as a result of this. It's really interesting dynamic. Really, really interesting. Let me just have a look at Satchiel. Wealth and charity. Um, true wealth lies within. It's time to place more value in yourself so that you can be generous without feeling drained. So I, I think you're I think there's an element of you being used here, par three. And I think you know, because of this maiden energy, like people are taking advantage of your good nature because you're so powerful, because you you have such an amazing gift. Um, so what I would say, yeah, right, is why are you in this position? Why are you here in this place? Because with Kazemi reversed, that's it would normally be good luck. Reversed, it's 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 unfortunate it's, it's not good luck and it's synchronicity so there's something that's placing you in this position which is and this is like suffering and this is what this is kind of telling me it's telling me that you're in this place where you're you're having to experience this stuff and i think you're being you're being um you're being touted that it's actually for your own benefit when it's not and i feel like people are taking advantage of that they're taking advantage of you and maybe they're feeding you with a respect of this like, oh yeah, you know, you can get a lot from this or like, you know, you can you can maybe be a partner of the company or like, you know, you're part of us, you know, kind of thing. And you're like, hang on a minute, this isn't really like, a, 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 like aligning with my values because they're seeing that maiden quality in you and they're wanting to capitalize on that. That's the message that spirit is giving to me to give to you. So I'm just saying interesting okay let's see what this the gift of patience wait patiently for good things to come the desire for them to happen right here right now creates unnecessary stress trust the universe and everything happens at the right moment so what i get here again with the theme of synchronicity sometimes we want things really quick and when we're given the promise of something quick right particularly when we're in a difficult situation our compromising you know how we compromise ourselves and others can come into play just like that you know and before you know it, grooming, being abused, you know, that kind of thing, it can happen. And you don't realize it until you're out of the situation and away from it. So what this reading is serving as, part three, is a warning. It's saying to you that you are in a situation or you may be around a situation that is causing you to go against your values. Because you've got, there's a lot that's going here. To, to go against your values with particularly with this yeah right it, it's preying on your sense of charity it's preying on that so what you need to do and you might be thinking well there's nothing Rena. i don't know what you're talking about so if that's the case then fair enough this isn't your reading but if there is something just be aware of it just start to observe it just start to recognize your actions within that rather than just going blindly along with it like it's just some kind of like grand plan you may think that like Maybe, for example, it might be that somebody's asked you to come along and do something and then their their actual motivation is not clear or their, you know, what they're saying that the reason why they want you to come along might be actually different for the reason why they want you to come along. Do you know what I mean? So just, I'm not asking you to be like paranoid or, or suspicious, but I'm just asking you to be aware of this energy. And particularly, if you think that, you know, this could be a really, there we go. If something is too good to be true, it, pos it probably is, right? So if somebody comes to you with like an amazing like project or an amazing thing that like, you know, they say that you can make a lot of money or whatever and they ask you to invest a load of money because they want your experience and about how they know that you can generate money and whatnot. And then, they, they, and then you, you know, you, you, this person has charmed the heck out of you and you just think, wow, this is amazing. I'm just going to go along with it. And then you just get swept up in this whole idea and then you start, you play, you're planning to invest like maybe a couple of grand or whatever into this investment. And then you watch this reading, right? And then you like think, oh, okay. So what I would say is that maybe why not check the person out? Check, check the person out, see what they're, what, see what, what is going on with them before you make the investment. That's all I would say. So just, just, just have a look at that. 
because there's something here that's telling me about this person's history that is not is not legit i'm not feeling good about it and it's, it usually happens when i can't i can't tune into the energy directly it's something that's masking it and there's you've got some deep kind of like you know with the envy and then with this card as well those are envious cards those are cards you know she was in she was in love with this guy and then um because the people that were in her i don't know her village or whatever yeah um wherever she was they were jealous of her so they built like a secret tunnel made out of glass to see each other but then when other people found out that they were seeing each other they smashed the tunnel and then it cut into pieces so then she had to like heal him so they hurt him and because she they were jealous of her and him and the, the love that they had so that's what i'm getting i'm getting there's some kind of jealousy and this cord initiation says to me that these people trust you there's a sense that they think that you're not going to do anything. They think that you're just going to be like, oh, you're going to just take it, basically. Use that to your advantage. Use this uh, maiden energy to your advantage, right? The fact that they're, they're preying on you because they think that you're innocent. They think that you, uh, you don't know any better, right? Because you're so giving. There's this sense of charity about you. They know that you've got... You know, and this as well with Frigg as well. There's, you know, she got done over, like, massively. Um... So, and she had a pretty hard time. So, it's, it's, it, this is what these people are seeing. They're seeing, oh, yeah, we can do that. You know, you know like how people like to try and take advantage of people, yeah? So, that's what I'm getting here. So, just, just, just watch out, part three. Let me pull some um, energy, crystal energy for you. Not to, not to alarm you or anything. It's just, all it is, is just to like kind of just get you, just make sure that the people who are around you want you for you, right? They're not taking advantage of your good nature, your money. They're not going to scam you. Do you know what I mean? Okay, right. So you've got this, this is agate, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. So stability, grounding and truth. A stabilizing stone agate is used to balance the mind, body and spirit, creating harmony in all areas of your life. Much like the patterns on the crystal itself, grounding and supportive, agate helps to reveal inner truths, cleansing beneath the surface to expose your authentic self. A wonderful stone to heal resentment, agate frees you from the self-imprisonment of inner anger, replacing it with safety and security. Agate takes its time, vibrating at a slow and steady pace and encourages you, encourages you to take as much time as you need for the matter at hand and it's gemini and it's mercury so if you've got some agate get some agate stick it on your body or keep it around with you that will help you to ascertain the truth of the situation gemini is very much the investigator the one who wants to get to the bottom of things the one who wants to like make sure that the truth rises to the surface so um yeah so pile three i hope that was useful um I, I, you know as I said, like, just take this, take it or leave it, you know, you could, you could just think that this is all BS, it's fine, but this is what the maiden energy is asking me to communicate to you right now, if you did like this message, message, please do give it a thumbs up, please do subscribe for more videos, but otherwise, my darlings, please do go and check out the other readings from Helen, from either Serpent Tarot with the crone, and, um, uh, Ember Moon from Ember Moon Tarot, and she's doing the, uh, mother, so please do check them out, um they'll probably have like a different message for you that'll probably be something that you can work with with this whole thing you know so anyway my loves take care see you soon bye